Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is going to be an explanation walk around video showing this Golf Mark 7.5, right? Seven. Why is it 7.5? What was there a 7 as well? There was a 7 and then they done a slight change okay. before they brought out the 8. 8. Now I I prefer the 7.5. The 8 is just a bit strange, isn't mm -hmm. it? But each to their own, each I guess. Their own, yeah. So Okay, let's start with the fact that this car is owned by Joe behind me. You will see him when he will help me to show the car around. You have had few years behind you, right? Yes. You yes. can say that Joe is way past 70 year old, but he has just as much passion as, I don't know, when you were... When was the first time when you had a car audio system? Oh, as soon as I could drive. 18, 17, yeah. quite a few moons ago. And we, we talked in the last few days about, you know, your music uh, history, systems you had. And of course, at some point, you found a few crazy videos from PS Sound. Yes, yeah. And that's when you started to think, my journey. What's, what's that? What's that? What's that crazy stuff that we see on YouTube from Peter? All these crazy systems with many amps many many channels and he talks about all these fancy things like time alignment like differential rear feel what is this front sub about yeah the heck? yes yes so not long time ago he wasn't that long time ago i think two months ago when we first really yeah, met. yeah, yeah. we had a phone call before that and we were talking about things right yes yeah you came down and we had a look at your system and this is when i'm going to insert the picture of the boot build that we saw only three days ago when you turned up that's what joe had in the boot testing things things laying around and actually the, the first time when i saw your car two months ago it looked even crazier it was even, yes. it was <laughs> even crazier yeah you just had a, a two-way front end um sub at the back and that was it just five speakers and as soon as you heard a couple of systems from us, you came to a meeting, guess what? It became obvious that you wanted to try to push the system a bit further. And that's when front sub plan came into action. And we will show you guys that many of the things in this car were built by him. So let's see what's in here right now. So we spent two days on this car, about two and a half, and then tuned it this afternoon. And it's looking much better than what it was like on the beautiful picture, the way it came to us at the beginning. Um, so at the beginning, you had only three amps in the car and the Helix DSP.3, and the DSP.3 was having slight issues. So we, we knew that we would have to put a new um, amp DSP in. So we put the Helix DSP Pro Mark III in, and probably this is the time when we have to tip things and we have to go down and, and show the guys what we changed to, what's in the boot. And that's where the title comes from, because this video is going to be titled as Old School Meets, meets New School. New school yeah. right? So, you will see, there's a lot happening in here now. So, we can tip that box. It's a GL12W6 Mark III. Um, as our rear sub. And then now, we can also see what's underneath. That's where we have... A lot of stuff. Oh, you pull it out as well. Good. Why not? Why not? <laughs> so, yeah. We thought that we would just change the DSP, add a 4 channel amp somehow, somewhere. And then when you turned up Monday morning, you also mentioned that you found that small 2 channel Genesis Stereo 100 which could be utilized for rear feel, because when we knew that we would change to the DSP Pro Mark III, we would have the extra channels, why wouldn't we be able to plan the system to run rear feel too? And then things escalated very quickly. <laughs> please, please, yes. Because from where we started, and I'm gonna insert the picture now again, <laughs> people can see the layout that you had only one board on the floor and then everything underneath where the spare wheel would be, uh, that space was cut off and there wasn't enough space on the floorboard itself to mount five amplifiers, DSP, distribution block and everything because now it's six devices and all that had to be laid out somehow 
and fit underneath the floor as well. This is one thing I like in golf, so that you can fit so much stuff in them and you still have a practical boot. It's amazing. Mm, mm, I love it. If people don't want old school amps, they want just a DSP amp with a monoblock, you can still have a subwoofer underneath the floor. That's the crazy thing. Mm -hmm. So, what do we have here now? <clears throat> so we have the Helix DSP Pro Mark III over there, running the system in fully active mode, which means that we have individual amplifier channels for every single speaker. That's when I get the comments from people who don't understand what fully active means and oh, all these amplifiers and, and it can only play that loud or, you know, a few interesting comments. I could call it stupid comments as well, sorry, sometimes, sometimes people send stupid comments. So we need all these channels because this way we can control every single speaker in the car. When you think about having a tweeter on, on passenger side as opposed to the driver side, they have completely different response. You have to be able to control them one by one, balance them out. It's same with the mid-range, same with the mid-bass, same with rear speakers, subs, everything. And if you run fully active with the DSP, hopefully it's not a new thing for many of you guys, it's 2024. That way you can connect with a laptop, you can use an RTA microphone, you can do real-time analyzation of the frequency response, of uh, the time alignment, and everything, everything can be adjusted so you can create a whole different experience in a car that you can only understand if, if, if you go out and if you listen to a couple of cars that run fully active and, and they've been tuned by somebody who understands the game. People could say that these are the competition level systems because when you go to a sound quality competition, that's where you will see many cars with so many amps, so many channels. Of course, for daily systems like, like this, for instance, and somebody who hasn't had experience running fully active systems with high-end gear and whatnot, I, these days I wouldn't even plan to use all these standalone amplifiers mm -hmm. unless someone has a very specific reason for that. Because these days even DSP amps can sound so good that most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Speaker installation is way more important. It's way more important to install speakers in the right locations. It's way more important to install mid-bass rigidly so you don't have buzzes and rattles. And the tuning itself, now you know how big difference that makes. Mm. That makes all the difference between, you know, all this gear that we have here, a lot of money. Okay, on second-hand market, this can be now found relatively cheap. Like... These three DLSMs can be done from six to eight hundred pounds these days, if you if you're lucky. Those Genesis, maybe those two can be done from like four five hundred, if you're lucky. If you're lucky, yeah. yeah. Um, let's say five hundred, eight hundred, thirteen hundred quid in five amps, and the quality that they represent is way way more than that price. And even if now these days you buy one, let's say a Brax graphic amp two and a half grand or ooh, let alone, you know, something crazy like a, a Matrix Pro, four and a half grand here in UK. This is cheap compared to that. And that's just one amp. Mm -hmm. These are now giving us many, many channels. These are giving us now 10 active channels. We have more channels because we bridge that A3 and we go through what's running what. But these days I wouldn't even jump into fitting so many amps. And that's when things escalated Monday morning when we realized that, oops, we need more space. We have to cut up the existing board. We have to fit another board on the floor. We have to put stuff down there. Okay, what can we do? And we did, we did a lot. Worked hard, yeah. We worked really. hard and it all came together. We, we, I think we jumped three chapters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Unintended. Genesis, four channel. That runs the tweeters and the mids up front on the pillars. We will show it in a second when we go to the front. The Stereo 100 runs the rear fill. Yes, these could be configured in many different ways. If somebody fancies running the Stereo 100 for maybe the mid or the tweet, it could be run of that too. We decided to run this way. You know, it doesn't make such a big difference, I think. Then we have one DLS A3 for the mid bass. 
We have another DLS A3 bridged running the front woofer or front sub. And we have the A6, the good old A6 based running the rear sub. So that's our layout with funky angles. Well, that was the easiest way to, to have room. Because unfortunately those amps at the bottom cannot go straight because the V-large starts to curve in so they had to tip as well. Or if you pull them closer you wouldn't have enough space for the wiring and have access. So then the power distributions also went on a funky angle. And this way it was easier to run cables. It, to be fair it's a lot. It's a lot to wire up in such a tight space and such a tight time. But you did it. Mm -hmm. We did it. 100%. Oh, we don't even want to get into your power cable situation, right? No, we, we don't. Well, the good thing with us is that, like, Joe was here with us because it was supposed to be just a two-day job. There was no point to drop the car off and then go home, come back. So we stayed down in hotel and he was with us during the day. We don't mind having customers around until they step away from us, you know, and let us work, but they can see what we do. There's nothing to hide here. That's why we show these videos. There's absolutely nothing to hide. Joe could see. Um, I, I, many times I could sense that, Pete, come on, I, wa I want to do it. And I didn't let you do it. No, no which is understandable, yeah. yeah. But I was itching. We wouldn't have finished it, that's one. Two. Yeah. I know that we, we would have done certain things twice. Yeah, you would probably gone over what I did, yeah. That's fine. But you can see, it wasn't going over, it was just done properly, mm -hmm. once. We have this saying now, do it time. once. Do it once. Do it once. <laughs> <clears throat> like, we didn't do braiding on the power cables, we just had ferrules on them, heat shrink on them, so the positive cables are grey, we went with grey colour coding, I just didn't fancy see red in here, <clears throat> and then everything that's black, that's negative for the power. We have ferrules and heat shrink on the speaker cable terminals, so we don't have copper hanging and whatnot. Because we saw from your wiring that, yeah, we, we had things to improve, for sure. Oh, it was rubbish. It was yeah. rubbish. It was literally thrown in the car. Yeah. Yes. I know that your intention wasn't even to do that like a permanent install, but still, this had to be done properly because there's no point to do it twice. So, <clears throat> our source is speaker level from the head unit. Yes, most integration, I think, is possible in these cars, but it's mega money. It costs like... 700 quid to get a box just to get yeah. signal out of the head unit and, and then even even then what, what do you play? Yes. <clears throat> what do you play of the head unit? So we added a hack Bluetooth module to the car which allows us to to play at least CD quality stream directly from the phone. I know many people can argue about oh it's not good enough quality. I can tell you I can wire in coax from a DAP or just stream to that Bluetooth card and now people can't tell the difference. And then you could hear as well the difference between the radio and streaming. Yes. It's day and night. Night and day, yes. Yeah. So, source, many amps, and then we get to the front end. The front end that uh, had to be transformed in a short time. Because <clears throat> as I said, uh, we only had two days scheduled for this project. And... Yeah, when we face that, oopsie, it's not just the case that Joe is going to wire a few things up in the boot while we do the pillars with Eddie. No, it was Eddie working hard as hell to do the pillars in two days, plus uh, fit the controller, which is amazing. Because in these cars, I mean, there's room, but then you sacrifice that space. Um, and you don't want to drill anything, but you also want the controller to be accessible. So Helix has the conductor, which is a stunning little thing because it's just a knob, but it, it can do everything that you need for daily. And if this trim panel pops out underneath, there's a bolt for the for these controllers. And underneath that bolt, he created a bracket that goes under and bolts down together with the controller. And then there's enough gap where it can come out. He trimmed it with Alcantara and then it's neat enough so you can do all the functions sub level rear feel attenuation so you can turn the rear feel down up and down up to your liking or if you have reefer passenger or not we have master eq so purple is base if you press and hold it that becomes yellow so you can turn it 6 db up or down you can also set the frequency where you want the master eq to work so for base 
it, it depends now i set it to 200 so it it rises anything on the 200 and the treble is set to 4k so if you have a recording that wasn't recorded so well and it's harsh and it's creamy then it's going to turn you can turn the top and down that's when usually people want to use the tone control more than anything because many songs were not mastered great and if you have a revealing system it's going to show it so sub level rear feel yellow is treble oh sorry that was purple but through the camera doesn't show well so that's treble press and hold it for one second that's purple that's bass press it one more time and then this is where you have the presets if it turns red that means that's empty so all these are empty presets and then we have three presets where one is uh, an accurate tune with rear feel running normal so if there are rear passengers they get a nice feel second is rear feel running differential and then three is party that's it joey's showing that's yes. it party. that's that's a preset when when we can go a bit crazy when the sub is not so well integrated to the system but it it, it definitely creates more fun more pressure and many people want to enjoy system on loud levels too i'm not against it so as simple as that and then the main volume you can configure everything even the color even the orientation where the volume starts where it ends you can configure the colors the dim you can dim the light you can do so many things with this controller it's insane i don't even want to use anything else from from helix anymore honestly director is just a big chunky thing yes some people could fit the director here because he has touch screen but when you drive you, you don't want to look at the screen whether you press the right things with this you don't even have to look you know it even if you don't look there press it twice i get the rear feel and i can adjust rear feel simple as that mm. and of course you see the colors even even if you look you know straight onto the road you can see that down there oh it's blue now I so think, i think most sensible <clears throat> people would use it for purely for volume i would have thought and maybe base level if you want to adjust oh, it a little bit, bit yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's that's about it so now our system consists of the micro precision 5 series tweeter with the 5 series mid-range um, these tweeters can come in silver or black but we wanted to keep the system a bit more stealthy so we went with the black but of course you can say that hey but the mid-range is equally shouty because it's uh, silver so that's why we have these 3d printed grills that slot in and I don't put it in because I haven't taken pictures yet. But then that way, or just carefully I place it there, it becomes a bit more pleasant for the eyes. Like that. If I go to widescreen, but then the picture quality is poor because I have my old phone with me now. But it's definitely less in your eyes. It's, it's more pleasant while you drive. So that's what we originally had to install <laughs> but yeah it, it, it escalated quick <laughs> just a bit joe installed the brex which is it the, the old brex or the new ml6 not the new no the it's old the older one 6.1 pp mm -hmm. it's the pp pp yeah oh fancy face plug okay yeah, with plug. so he has that brex mid base in there in the door he did all the work in the door and it's okay but now you know mm. now you know those yeah, guys know. who follow our work they know those guys who heard cars from us they know door is never good enough it doesn't matter how expensive speaker you have it doesn't matter how fancy mounting ring at the front somebody installed for you with lights and angles and trimming and whatnot and it doesn't matter they spend 30 hours soundproofing the door it's not good enough to our standards i'm sorry I may sound big-headed, but one day you will understand if you don't understand it yet. A mid-base has to have a rigid mounting and the door is never that. I agree. Yeah. And now you know it too. Yeah. So, Because now you don't really have much else to do in, in your free time. That has ended on your list of things. Given me much room for thought, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. plenty. So we will see you in 2025 <laughs> and you will have a beautiful stunning enclosure there that's not going to have any buzz and any rattle you will have just clean accurate tight mid base mm -hmm. that's what we want but 
Look at that. I have to emphasize it again. He's above 70 year old. 70 year young. Sorry. You're young because nobody else would install a front sub in such an awkward position at that age. Well now, guys, come on, you can comment. Tell me your age. Tell me your age and tell me what crazy installation you did in your car. I, I want to see how many people are still so passionate to do crazy stuff like that. Because working down there is not fun, was it? Yeah, no, that was quite hard. That was quite physical. Yeah. And it's even worse when people have to work in kicks, when you have to climb in and twist and yeah. you can't get to stuff, especially on driver's side where you have pedals as well. And it was between zero and two degrees. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah, which wasn't nice. But it plays nice. <laughs> it's done. Worth every ounce of sweat. Yeah. So even, even when you didn't have the car tuned, you fitted that, what was your first impression of a front sub? Wow, was, was my first. Within mm. the first few seconds, I could not believe the difference that it made. Yeah. Um, not, not, I don't want people to think, oh yeah, boom, 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 boom. It it's changed about the overall sound. The sound that I felt was missing for many, many years. And all of a sudden, oh, this, this is it. This is, this is such an improvement. Over and having without, a sub in the back. Yeah, yeah, without going any further. So... Yeah, you know, that is a definite for me. That is a definite. I mentioned difference. I mentioned many times on YouTube as well and on Patreon as well that it it literally it almost doesn't matter what sub you use. It doesn't matter how big that front sub box is. Oh, of course, don't make it like a shoe box. And give at least eleven, twelve, or fifteen liter to your front end closure. Or twenty two. Or twenty two that you thought it was twenty two. <laughs> uh, Eddie was joking and he was saying that this is yeah it was measured with twenty two mugs. <laughs> but probably we have around 15 liters in this enclosure which is, which is plenty enough for the intended range and today we even proved that that front sub can play stupid low but what limits the response of a front subwoofer how low it can play is actually not the driver is the cabin because when we measure this sub and open the tag gate the difference was drastic Wow! Surprising. and guys if I have to mention it here as well I will mention it at the end of the video as well that we have shit loads of content on patreon now um over three years content that you, where you can learn like <laughs> it's insane honestly if somebody joins patreon now you get like over 250 daily updates you can see every day's progress of projects like this we share all the little tips tricks we have weekly topics educational topics we have fabrication tier with long videos where eddie has plenty of videos showing how to build one of these and there you go. That's where you got the inspiration That's as well. That's where I got my inspiration and confidence from. Yeah. Again, had I not have been on Patreon and watched these videos, there's no way I would have attempted that. On no your own. Way. And you saw all the steps. We explained everything down to the last bit, what to look for. And you did it. It's amazing, honestly. Yes. Where was... I don't know. I, I didn't see anybody attempting things like this years ago let alone 20 30 years ago yeah yeah i i hadn't even heard of front subs i i subs. i got a message today from canada from one of my guys and he was like pete they they keep mentioning to you on diy audio on, in america on the forum and they keep sending links to people from my videos from youtube where i explain what front sub is about and and I have never met a single person saying that doing a front sub was a bad move. 100%. Because it's instant. It's instant identity. You can tell what a difference it can make over a red limit base in the door. And honestly, mm. if you do a door build, forget spending big money on a mid base. Honestly, you just bang something in that's going to play the intended range and that's it. Yeah. Some people spend thousands on fancy mid base drivers and they put them in the door. Like me. I mean, I, well, I, you you didn't buy that new, did you? What the mid base? Yeah. When? Three years ago. Jeez. Two years. Oh, you were far away from PS Sound at that time. Oh, oh yeah, that, that was before I'd even heard of Jesus. PS Sound. But the point I was trying to make was 
regarding the front sub, you're talking about putting expensive speakers in. Yeah. It's by far for a single upgrade mm. biggest improvement. Yeah. And I say that hand on heart. Yeah. You know, I bought quite a few expensive speakers, but I never found that missing part of the jigsaw. You didn't have that, that playful bass that the subs don't do from the back accurate up front punch you don't yes. you don't get and that's where people think that if they put expensive speaker in the door that's going to be the magic but it's, it never is which it never is now you know compared to a proper front sub at 100 percent. did you did you think for a second when when you asked me about what driver to use and i mentioned this sb acoustics did you ever think that oh that's the cheap i hadn't heard of sb acoustics sb acoustics yes um but when you saw the price did it did it occur to you that maybe hey, it's cheap? Yes, yeah. compared to <laughs> JL or something like that. Yes, did you? But it works. Yeah. Oh, of course, for a business, it's not good because nobody can make profit on it. Um, it's it's a home audio driver, really. But this manufacturer has few drivers like this. Exceptional drivers that work in tiny little sealed enclosures. Regardless whether it's home audio or car audio. But in car audio, because we can't build big enough boxes, it's very important to have drivers that perform well in a small box. Mm -hmm. And this driver is one of them. This is the Duo 3 ohm version, just if some of you wonder which one it is, because they have multiple drivers, different versions. This is the Duo 3. And it does exactly everything that we need. Um, it's like 300 euros, I think, in Europe. It's, it's not crazy money. Yes, we use the JLTW3, which is equally accurate and that can take more power and that can be beyond brutal for a front sub not that this wasn't giving enough in terms of output right it's enough more than enough but of course there are a few people who want it all and yes. more yes. Um, but you could literally have any eight ten inch driver that's happy to work in a small box and don't worry about it just get anything, anything within your budget. It can be 150 pound cheap thing, anything from Helix has options, uh, Focal, Stereo Integrity now introduced a fancy one in America, Blam has shallow drivers, Arc Audio has shallow drivers. Anything, guys, try anything, just bang it in. And I talked to my guys on Patreon as well, just grab a small bookshelf speaker at home wire it up and put it down to the floor and compare it compared to the door you can have one box here wired on the floor keep that mid base in the door wired as well and just mute and unmute between the two in the in the same range between let's say if that plays between like 70 to 250 hertz in freeway just click 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 and hear the difference you won't be disappointed to hear the difference between a door and a solid environment for a mid base mm. And that's exactly what's happening with the front sub drivers as well, that you put a driver up front in, in, a, in a rigid enclosure, furthest away from you in, in the front of the cabin, in the footwell. Of course, there are different orientations and different locations in the car where you can install a front sub in a glove box, in the center console, underneath the seat, behind the seat, behind the quarter panel. There are many locations with odds and cons, and I have an educational weekly topic about it as well, breaking all those options down. So if you want to learn more, again, check out the link in the description. Because in a video like this, I don't want to jump into it. But even now, we are introducing your car and we are talking about 10 different things, right? Yes. yes. But that's the beauty of it, that some people are with us and they listen to us. And just like you, you give it a go and you don't regret it. Yes. yes. Thank you, Felipe. That's it changing changing things and making people happier that's what it's about so tweeter mid mid base in the door front sub we are running currently the factory rear fuel good enough you heard it today how, how does the factory speaker sound in the rear door now i couldn't believe they were factory speakers <laughs> yeah. honestly honestly i've never heard them sound like that yeah, you just put a good amp on it, DSP, tune, and it's like, wow. 
I'm sounding like I'm talking rubbish, but no. I have to say it is I, true. I, I, I keep keep joking about it, but you know, I don't I don't pay my customers to tell these things. Yeah. They they pay me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So But that's the best thing when you know somebody is happy to be part of a video like this and then we can share these things with with the public because this gives inspiration to everybody you can't have excuses honestly after after your project old school meets new school right that's it people can't have excuses that oh i don't have money i don't have time the weather is shit make it happen and we were talking about it was it this morning that some people say that car audio is expensive it's an expensive hobby and we broke it down that if you smoke if you have maybe a few drinks, you can easily spend four, five hundred, five hundred pounds a month on addiction in this country. Of course, in different countries it may be, you know, different cost. But let's say five hundred in a month, right? No, we said three. We we took it down to three hundred. Three hundred is more sensible. Yeah, yeah. Let's say three hundred. Just a cycle. Yeah. Uh, for for yeah, okay. 300 in a month on Siggy, whatnot. Because, yeah, what was it? More than 10 pounds a box of Siggy. Yeah, I think they're about 15 pounds a box now. That's stupid. Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah, we can stick to 500. 14, 15. We can stick to 500 a month on, on, on stupid addictions. Yeah. Uh, somebody maybe even plays games and whatnot. Oh, yeah, 500 a month. Okay. So, 12 months, six grand. Let's look at the project for five years. You buy a car, don't swap it every year. There are people who can afford that, fair enough. But if you have a full-on installation, a lot of equipment, and if you want to enjoy it, five years is doable. Is that the reasonable time most people have a car for? Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah four or five years. Yeah, let's Depends. say. If they get bored or something happens, or circumstances change. But let's say five years. Six grand in a year, five years, well, you tell me how much that is. That's serious money on things that you don't see on a daily basis. And then why do people cry about, holy shit, Pete wants to charge 10, 15, 20, 50 grand for an audio system. <laughs> yeah. It's not that you can't have a great system from a couple of grand, you can. But you have to be clever, knowing what to buy, potentially a second hand. You have to know how to install yourself because if you take it to a shop, like us or somebody else who can install well, it's gonna cost. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Everything costs. If your boiler goes down, you will have to pay somebody who's gonna fix it. If your electricity is shit in the house and they have to rip everything out, that's gonna cost as well. So what's the difference when somebody installs audio system professionally? I think the problem is that many people still live in the world where, oh, my body can do it, <laughs> right? in the back garden and that's when things go wrong when we share nightmare videos on YouTube so all right I'm not gonna drag it longer guys I dragged it plenty enough we talked about a lot with Joe um, hopefully you you appreciated his thoughts especially about this journey which is far from the end yeah. I think this is your when your journey really really starts Beginning of the end, what's it? Beginning of the end, or? No, no, no. Okay. End there's, there's, there's no end in this sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and there's going to be another video. We took a short video today just to figure out how much the current draw of the system is. We will share it a bit later. Uh, you will see how much a system like this with six pieces, five amps draw, old school AB class amplifiers. You will see that too. I know many people never have a clue about how much a system actually draws when it comes to current and as I mentioned you can check out the description where you will find the link to Patreon where you can see the daily updates of projects like this you will see the RT evaluation of this you will see what this system measured and also the end result what it measured after the tuning how it got put together very valuable for those who may try to attempt to tune a car themselves um, just to get a rough idea about at least where to get crossovers, what to expect, if anything, right? You can see that. And we will also have a long fabrication video of this car where you will see how Eddie built these pillars and how we mounted them. We have explanation uh, 
tips and tricks on mounting, aiming, how to pull it. How, how we, we even have a part when you, you recorded, you were the cameraman, you were many things oh, wow. in the last <laughs> two and a half days. Um, where Joe was recording us trimming these pillars, how to trim these, because it's uh, definitely not simple to trim a pillar like that, but we have a good technique. So, yeah, if you're interested in stuff like that, then definitely check out the description for Patreon. But I'm going to leave it here, guys. Hopefully you liked it. Subscribe, share it, feel free to comment, do the usual things, spread the word, spread the word. And hopefully many of you can experience a bit of, a bit of magic like what you've had. Mm. Please, yes. And also keep your eyes peeled on PS Sun Facebook page because that's where usually we advertise car audio meetings. Um, we try to organize as often as we can. It's worth to mention that we have Eurofinals, Emma Eurofinals coming in Salzburg in less than four weeks now. Mm -hmm. It's in between 18th and 20th of April in Salzburg. Check out Emma, emmanet.com, I think. And you will definitely easily find, you will have hundreds of cars over there, sound quality cars, SPI cars, sound quality loud cars. We will be there with six cars as well, and we will be happy to demo any of our cars for you. We will have my S-Class, Eddie Citroen, the Amarok, we will have the Ford SD500, Max, Skoda Superb, uh, which was European champion last year. And we also have a new, another car from John, uh, a Mercedes GRC with OEM system in it. So we have plenty of cars and the UK team is crazy as well. Everybody's crazy in Salzburg, so it's worth to come, guys. Uh, get a ticket, fly over. The airport is like 10 minutes taxi away. Ooh, there's a big plane coming above us. So you can see us there as well in Salzburg. And I'm sure in the summer we will have ammo competitions. We will have meetings coming, so keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully you liked it. And we will see you in the next one. Take care.